Okay guys, so welcome to episode four of my Newbies to Bricks series. Um, an unfortunate title it turns out because I was thinking of the wrong kind of newbies. I was thinking of people new to Bricks, not new to web dev. That said, uh, I'm going to continue on here. I've taken a different approach in this last video, or second to last it's going to be now, um, because I was coming across bugs as I was working through Bricks and it kept interfering with the flow of the video and it could be quite confusing. So what I decided to do is create everything I need first, make the files available, and we'll just import them. I'll put these files up on a gist so you can download them. I'm just going to work through how I use those files and what they are, and then how you can move forward with that. This next video, I'll show you how to deploy that as a blueprint with local, so you can just push it out to new sites as you wish. Okay, so that said, let's head over to what we have. So with Faker Press installed, I have gone in here and in the posts, I've told it to create 16 posts and uncheck this, allow comments and hit the create or generate, I should say. That's given us 16 posts here. I've gone to each of those posts and just made sure that each one of these has a featured image because we'll use those for testing layouts later. And that's just dummy content ready for testing. Okay. Page wise, I've just created three pages or two pages. The policy was already there. Empty home page and empty style guide with nothing on them. We're going to start with the style guide. So we go edit with bricks on that. And we'll see if we go into the classes and variable manager, we've got no classes, no variables, nothing is in there whatsoever. And we go into themes, we've got no theme in there at all as well. So what we're going to do is go back to our variables uh, and we're going to hit the import, select the file, and you will download this uh, variables JSON from the gist. We're going to open that. It's going to ask if we want to create the category as well. Hit OK. Done. That is our variables done. While we're at it, in here, might as well import the classes. So we're going to import the classes, select the file. And this is for your buttons and um, uh, things like that, line clamps that you can't do through variables. So this is my selected classes. Import that. So we've got our classes for our framework imported here, just a few at this stage. Uh, done, hit save. We have our classes there. Okay, I'm going to go to my themes, hit plus, import, select the files. And I'm going to select my Bricks theme default style, which I exported, and open that. So there it is imported. Close, and we'll just select it. And there it is there. It's got all of, you can see all the yellow dots, means all of our settings are on there. One thing that Bricks doesn't do, and I don't know if this is a new thing or it's always been the case, when you do that, it does not import your color palettes. So what we have to do is go into our color palettes, delete the default one, so there's nothing in there, hit the plus, we're going to import from our file, and we're going to select our color palette, Bricks color palette there. Open that. And that's imported. Close. And then we have to set that there as the default. And what we have here is all of our colors. And I've named these in the same way that Advanced Thema will name them. So that's primary, primary L1 for light one, L2 for light two, etc. I've just done six of those. D1 through to D6 for the darks. Secondary, same with the... Uh, neutrals, and then I've just got black with some transparencies and white with some transparencies. So this is how Advanced SEMA will name these. Now this is important because what we want to do is later on, if we're using Advanced SEMA, we can delete this color palette, we can create this in Advanced SEMA and manage our colors through Advanced SEMA, which is a lot easier because I'll show you what's involved in changing these colors a little bit later. So this is an absolute pain in the butt way of managing your colors, um, but it is what we have with bricks right now. Okay, the other thing we can't do in bricks is we can't, in, in within this editor, we can't put any global classes. We have to put that into a text area in the brick settings, which is no formatting, or put it into the WordPress customized uh, custom CSS. Uh, so if you wanted things like um, things for accessibility, etc., that are global, you can't do it within this editor which you can do with advanced SEMA. So I'm going to show you when I do the advanced SEMA video, which is probably a couple long, I'll show you how we do it with advanced SEMA so we can extend that and make it much easier to use. All right, so there we go. So we've got that ready to go. Now, 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import from a file. No, I'm not because we can't import directly into the build. We've got to import a template. So I've got the okay, the uh, style guide. I've just copied that to the clipboard and then saved that as a JSON file. So if we open that JSON file there, And again, this will be on your uh, gist. So I'm going to do a Control A, Control C, Command A, Control C, if, uh, Command C if you're on Mac. Copy all that. Go back to my editor. And I'm just going to paste all into there. I will get. I should get a warning. I didn't. Normally, you get a warning the first time, telling you that uh, asking if you want to allow the clipboard to be shared. Just agree, and there you go. There is our framework with bricks. We don't have these here, the marks, because these are. Um, the way I've done those is that that's something that I didn't even think of to put up there is these are classes put on marks in inside the HTML and bricks does not export any CSS for these it only exports the CSS classes if you put that uh, class on an element so we can't do that here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to another so I forgot to actually get this uh, I'm going to pop over to this other site and grab from my customizer additional CSS and I'll we'll copy that come back to this builder and I'll make this available to you as well so just in a customize I really don't like the text area that, that Bricks gives you for your CSS so this is the better of the two evils so just paste that code into your customizer here in there and I've actually got some stuff for marks to, to uh, to style up those marks there. I've got a, some stuff here for the Bricks forms as well. So I'm going to publish that. Okay, and if we just save and refresh this page. There we go, come back down. And now our marks will be working because we've added that code into the customizer, which we can't add into the editor because it does not have global CSS in the editor that I could find at least. Maybe it's there, I can't find it. So that is the framework working on a brand new site just by importing the JSON files uh, across and uh, importing a single file for the um, style guide, which I'll also make available in there as well. So this is where it gets a bit nasty when you're working with this for colors though. So at this point here, we're up and running, we can start creating using these colors. If I want to change this primary, we've got primary plus we've got six light versions and we've got six dark versions. Now let's have a look in the theme in our theme settings, in our colors, go to our colors here. So there they are there. Now, Bricks does not have a color manager where you can globally change these. When I show you advanced SEMA, you will see why you use things like advanced SEMA. I change one value and all of these related values will change for you automatically. So that's a really, really good productivity thing. So let's have a look at this primary. We're going to change the uh, type. So we're going to click on the pencil to edit it. We're going to scroll all the way down here, change what we want that to be. So we want that primary to be more like this here. So maybe that reddish color there, right? Well, we've got that reddish color. What I'm doing with my primaries, and this isn't going to suit every color, I'm setting the, let's save that there, I'm setting the HSL value on that, the L, to 50, 50 out of 100. So then I can do darks and lights either side of it. What we need to do is grab a calculator and go, okay, so if I've got 50 and I want my minimum to be, say, around, I don't know, 5, so we've got 50, we've got 45 divided by 6 variations, that's 7.5. We'll go for the lower number, which is seven. Okay, so let's bring up a notepad document. And let's work out what values we actually need to set these colors. I'm just going to drag this document across. Bear with me. Where it is there. Okay, so there's the document. So we want to take 50. We're going to do minus seven. So our first dark will be 43. Okay, I'm going to do that again, minus 7 again, so we go to 36, 29, 
15 and 8. So instead of being down to 5, we're down to 8. You might want to vary these a little bit. So there's our darks. Our lights will be 50 plus 7. First light is 57. 64, 71, 78, 85, and 92. This is probably going to be too low for a light. So we've got a light 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, we can get rid of our calculator. Uh, sorry, our yeah, calculator. Just move that across. Okay, so now we need to look at these and go, okay, so our dark, well, light one, we're going to edit that all the way down here, go to HSL. What do we want our light one to be? Uh, sorry, I jumped the step here. What we have to do is grab the hex value from that new primary color, go to our light one, edit that. Don't you wish you had advanced theme up? In this case here. So we're going to edit that. We're going to put that there. And our first light value we're looking at is 57, right? So it's 57. Save. Go back up here. Now we're looking at the primary light version 2. Paste that in there. Go to HSL. So 57 to 64. It's not too bad. You only have to do this once, but it's a bit tedious, really, isn't it? Okay, three. So it's 71. Ooh, okay, four. is 78 and 5 is 85 okay and 6 is 92 I think it was 92 it is 92 now we have to do our darks I'm going to do this in real time so I'm not tricking over how long this actually takes considering in AT we change one value and all of this change in fact in AT we also have some transparencies that will change as well so it is a way 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 better way of doing it okay let's do our dark value so the first one is 43 We're getting there. Okay, and what have we got left? We've got our D4. And just a reminder, when we paste this hex value in here, it is the primary value. It's the root value without uh, any dark or light. So we go there. So that one was uh, 78. I think. I think we're up to the 78. We are. Is that that one? It doesn't look right. Let's have a look here. D5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 85. Five. Okay, and then we've got this one here.
which is 92. Mm, 92. Okay, there we go. So these values now look wrong. What am I doing? So my lights, darks, so I think I got to there and I picked the wrong one. So my D4, where's my Ds? There's my D. D1, 2, 3, 4. I did, I jumped down to the wrong one. So my D4, here I was going to try and do this without making mistakes, should be 22. Mixed up my Ds and Ls. Come on, advanced schema. Fifteen, and we should have uh, eight. Okay, so let's have a look here. So, if we look at this color run here, there's our primary, there's our light stepping up through to super light. In our dark stepping down to super dark. And if we look at the swatches on here, we can see that from our dark getting darker, our light getting lighter, and there's our primary value there. So that's pretty much what's involved in doing it. If you're going to use the bricks color UI to do this, that's what you need to do. So um, I think um, there are better ways of doing this, but if you do not want any plugins whatsoever, you just want to use bricks, this will work for you. Okay, so I'll make these files available to you. Um, I've shown you how to change the colors. I've shown you how to import all of the files and settings that you want. Um, so um, you should have a pretty good starting point here. Um, and you can follow on from the previous video where I showed you where you can change all your values and variables and your topography and your spacing to change the way that your framework is working. Um, so that's all done. I'm going to leave this video here. Um, and what I will do is on the next one, I'll show you how to save this as a blueprint site in local and then deploy out to new sites as you please. And then you've got all your starter, you've got your framework, you're all ready to go uh, and ready to rock and roll. So if you like this sort of thing, hit the subscribe, hit the like and look forward to the next video on uh, which will be episode five and um, then probably in episode six later showing your AT. Thanks for listening, guys.